Hello, everyone. Hi, everybody. I am Brittany Chavers. And I'm Deb Floros. And, and this, this is Crimps. Is Crimps. <laughs> you, you cheater. You're trying to go fast. I'm like, trying to let you go. Oh, we're never going to get that. <laughs> we, we're just going to carry on for the rest of this show and find different ways to mess it up. How's that? <laughs> I love that for us. It's it's very on brand. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's just it's just us. It's the combination of us. <laughs> and we are like this in real life, folks. <laughs> yes. Very much so like this in real life. Lots of laughs, that kind of thing. <laughs> So welcome everybody to episode seven of Crimped. Wow, can you believe it? I know seven months. It's been it's been a wild ride. Yeah, and I feel like um, like we just recorded the last version. Like I, I just know. I feel like we just did this. It's I so know. weird. Like time just went by, just like that. <laughs> mm -hmm. So fast. I just posted that one like last week to my channel, so that might feel like maybe that's why it feels like it was just so fast yeah. but we actually did film it like a month ago <laughs> yeah yeah for those that don't know we film we typically film the third weekend of the month and um because we want to allow plenty of time to do any, you know, anything we want with the video sometimes manipulating a big video like this is challenging and we want to account for um, any, you know, glitches that might take place. So, so we we get it out there at the very end of the month, and then, um, you know, we start thinking about well, we we've already planned the following, you know, the next show, but then we really get into getting ready for it. So, um, yeah, it's very fun. Um, Brittany, tell these people um, what this show is all about. Like, there, if if we've talked so far and they don't know what the heck we're even saying. <laughs> Well, if you don't know what it's about, go watch the first six episodes, please. But <laughs> it please. is, um, they're all on YouTube for you. And they're all on our Facebook page, which is Crimped um, Jewelry Making Series and in our group on Facebook. And we'll include the links here. Um, but we are a jewelry making talk show. So we talk about all things jewelry making, beads, artists companies, techniques, where to buy. We give you lots and lots of really great information for free. So, um, but we also have a challenge and that is our crimp challenge. And that's where we challenge each other to make items or pieces of jewelry using specific items, kind of like chopped on the food channel. So um, if you haven't partic participated in one of our challenges, jump in, um, they're super fun. Sometimes we have some really unexpected items, some unexpected <laughs> results. Um, I think Deb's going to be forever haunted by our last challenge. If you haven't seen that, go watch episode six, but we really have a lot of fun. I don't do mine until 11 o'clock the night before they're due. That's also on brand for me, but, um, I feel like that's when my best work pops out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You, you do you, Brittany. <laughs> yeah. So we, um, Last month was uh, episode six was Brittany and I using a mystery item that we gave each other. And I am truly haunted uh, by that. In fact, I was clearing up the area behind me yesterday and I found that episode six piece. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm not really sure what I'm going to do with that, <laughs> but I'm, I feel like it's special because we I did it you need together. to frame it and hang it up in your office because that is just you made it through you made it through it's a badge of honor it's a badge of honor mm -hmm. so we um we actually put that out to you guys not a lot of folks took us up on that one that was a hard one for yeah. turning over because we couldn't send everybody like a mystery item that would be fun if we could um, but what we want to remind you all, if you watched episode six, is that we are very close to a thousand uh, mm -hmm. members of our group. So we want to make sure that you all participate in the challenges. So when we get to a thousand, we are going to start offering a, um, a like a prize for participation. So if you participate in the challenge, your name will go into a random name generator. And each time we do a show, 
we will name a winner and they'll get some free goodies uh, from Brittany and or I. And we um, we want to make sure that um, you enjoy yourself and participate in these challenges. So we're going to turn one over to you um, after we show off what we did um, from episode six. So should I remind them, Brittany, what that um, what the rundown is? So the challenge we introduced for each other last show, make a double strand bracelet, use at least one connector piece, use at least one wood element, use at least three different beads. So that sounds easy peasy. We thought that would be an easy peasy one for you guys. So um, Brittany, you wanna go first? Sure will. Um, <laughs> and it's funny, um, part of this bracelet relates to our next segment, but I'll talk about that once we reveal that. Um, so I made what I'm calling a mid-century modern jungle bracelet. Um, it is black and chartreuse and brown and copper and it's, mm, so so yummy so i my connector piece is right here this is Ooh. a ceramic um bracelet bar connector that i got from artist leah clark who runs carly's creations um and then i have this is my double strand part so these are Ooh. check like little table, table cut pack. quatrefoil flowers um lots of copper and here's my wood element. It's like a um, half wood, half acrylic bead. And then yeah. I've got a nice little, um, nice little copper toggle on it. That's what gave me the, the, surprisingly, that's what gave me the most issues last night. I had to put on more jump rings, but I use the jump rings as beads here. I have some um, little black and brass beads i can't Ooh. it's not focusing but those are from tucson so i have like four or five different styles of beads but i just love it so much it's a style of bracelet that i i love making this is not the first time i've done this style but yeah. i it's really fun changing up the components because you can make a bracelet that looks completely different depending yeah. on the colors or, or the the vibe of the beads so she's really pretty um i will be wearing it a lot i just love this little wood bead that i've Probably got from Hobby Lobby or something, and it just makes me happy. I'm, I'm going to be making a matching necklace because I have some of the beads left. <laughs> I love that. That has all the cool colors. It's pretty, like, seasonless. Mm -hmm. It's got texture, and you've got some copper in there, which I am crazy about copper right now. So, um, oh, copper. It's my favorite. I love it, love it, love it, love it. So by the time um, you guys see this show, you will have seen close up uh, video and photos of our pieces. So if you want to go see that, haven't yet, go to the Crimped uh, group or Crimped uh, Facebook page and check out the posts about these pieces. Mm -hmm. So what about you? What's your bracelet look like? So um, I last Monday sat down, I, I was uploading a video and said, okay, I, while that's happening, I'm gonna make my piece. And I made it, I loved it, I loved everything about it. I was so excited about it. I dropped it into a little plastic bin. And that night I went to bed and I was lying there and I thought, wait a minute, did I make that a triple strand bracelet? And this is a double strand project? Yes, I did. I made a triple strand bracelet, which I love and would have just, ah. so I quickly pulled together a double strand bracelet, <laughs> which I also love, but not as much as the other one. So I can show you that one too. But what I did was um, a little, so I used for my connector, a filigree butterfly. So I kind of curved it a little bit. It's a, you know, kind of a lightweight metal butterfly. And I used some metal tube beads and also incorporated these cool kind of rustic wood beads by wire wrapping them and stringing them on. Ooh. And my second strand are these cool aventurine uh, pebble beads. I don't know. They just look kind of rustic and earthy and fun. 
And then I have a couple of little uh, wood dangles uh, at the clasp. So it's a neat butterfly, neat butterfly. I'm really into butterflies. So um, I've got a little movement, a little bit of color, a silver metal in there. So I really like this one. I like how it came out. Yeah, I like the movement. I love the little butterfly. I love those wood beads. It's super cute. Can't wait to see like the close ups of it because I'm like trying to it's get too close to, to my phone. <laughs> it's, it's hard to see it. And it and I think what I was thinking about was um, letting people know that sometimes something that wasn't necessarily marketed as a connector can be used as a connector. So you can connect, you know, you can connect a closure, you can connect strands of beads and filigree has lots of holes to work with. So you can do it. I did a little bit sideways. So just, you know, try it, try things out, pick things that aren't like necessarily a connector and make it a connector, right? Mm -hmm. yep. and, and quickly, this is the one that I made that I love more. It's a triple strand of um, glass cubes Cute. with seed beads, three different colors. And then I did this little donut connector. It's a metal donut with mm -hmm. some really cool like design on it. And then my wood element was this little flower wood charm. Oh, cute. And so I really love this one more so than the other one. But now I have two new bracelets to wear. Yeah, so I'm going to do that. Kind of match so you can stack them. They both have a little bit of orange in them, just a different mm -hmm. kind of orange. So, yeah. So that was fun. So we got to turn this over to them. Like, this is the challenge for everyone now. Yeah. So uh, recap, uh, use at least one connector, use a wood element and three different types of beads. And it's got to be a double strand bracelet. Don't triple strand it. Not one, not, not three, two. <laughs> <laughs> I really, I couldn't, I actually got out of bed to get up and see. And I'm like, oh my God, I can't believe I did that. <laughs> and you're the one who set the challenge. I know. I, thought I, had it. I think I got the three different kinds of beads like in my head thinking oh three strands of three different beads like in my head that's what I had started in you know so yes two double strand bracelet right double right. strand okay so you guys go make a double strand bracelet with all of those things and post it in the group and um maybe we will hit a thousand in this month, this, this coming month. And so maybe if you enter something into the group, you might be eligible for something fun from us. So, you know, give it a shot. <laughs> so Brittany, um, um, I'm excited about what we're about to do next. Um, we've got a nice feature for this month. You wanna, um, you wanna do the honors of the um, intro? Yeah, um, I'm also wearing an Easter egg. I don't know if you can oh. see this. Oh my God, I love, 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 love. So I made this <laughs> last night before I made my 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 challenge piece. I was like, oh, let's just start making jewelry when we have things, other things to do. But if you don't already know, this is a Raku bead right here. And this is a Raku um, pendant. And I got these in Tucson from one of my very favorite bead artists. And her name is Amy Mealy, and she is here with us today. I'm so excited. Um, I love spending time with her when we go to our show, when we go to Tucson shows. Love looking at all her beads, and I'm so excited she agreed to talk to us today. <laughs> so let's bring her on. Let's bring her on. I'm so excited about this. Amy! Yay! Amy. <laughs> Thank you for joining us, Amy. Thanks for being here on episode seven of Crimped. Well, thank you for inviting me. Like, this is an honor. I'm excited. So thank <laughs> you. <laughs> we both love you. So when when we were talking about, you know, who might we have on the show at some point? And this conversation took place long ago. We're like scratching down some names. We're like, well, we got to get Amy for sure. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> we've, so we've both... We both had opportunities to shop you, your stuff in Tucson in person, which is so much fun. Um, and I know you also do online shows, so we'll get into some of that conversation. Yeah, it's um, so when I do the show, like online, they're beautiful. But when you come to my booth and you see like 
the presence of like how sparkly and how like really like there's so much depth to each piece. So at the end. Um, yeah, so uh, it's like they're cool online, but they're even cooler when you see them in person. For sure. Yeah, for sure. Every time I spend, I spend way too much time at your booth every single time. And I'm just like, I don't, I, I can't go home with everything. <laughs> so what are we taking home today? <laughs> and I like um, really like put like, I like everything I make, I cram on the table. So you are overwhelmed and you see it all. <laughs> so Amy, what's the name of your company? Oh, um, it's Zaz Bead Company, which is X A Z. Like, I don't know if you can see my like. Oh, where? That's there it is. My knuckle tats. Um, yeah. So Zaz Bead Company, and um, you have my. I have a website, uh, zazbead.com, and then I sell on Facebook too. But, yeah, and it's yeah, and you got to get in there fast because people buy up those beads. <laughs> you know, yeah. Like I try to list as much as I can, and sometimes. I do limited quantities too because I like to keep it fresh and like I'm always like, what do? what's next? Da, da, da. So, yeah. But yeah, I totally feel that on a, a subatomic level as a bead maker too. <laughs> it gets old <laughs> making the same ones all the time. <laughs> yeah, I feel like I'm bored. Other people are getting bored with it. So, right. you know, I want to make, put my love and enthusiasm into it. So it's like, okay, here you go. Yeah, here's a little bit of me. <laughs> yeah. So how did you how did you get started with ceramics and Raku and and tell us your story. Tell us your story. My, yeah. So my story is um it started like a long time ago in college. I um, well, I went to school at the University of Utah and I just took I was like I'm going to take a pottery course and I just took one and then I took another one and I transferred schools and I kept, like taking more and more pottery because by trade, I am like, so I do clay, I do functional, like I do like mugs and cups and stuff too. So I started there and then, um, I like, you know, life takes you here, takes you there. I like, I, like I followed this idea. I'm going to move to Salt Lake on a whim, moved in with my friend and was like, what am I going to do with my life? And I had my, my, uh, degree and everything biology art waiting tables at the time and a friend of a friend's dad owned the company actually that like zaz bead company and so i went to work for him because he like was like oh yeah like make beads so he's like i need somebody to make beads and ship and pack and you can have space in my studio you can put your kiln you can put your wheel you can have this corner and I was like, and all I have to do is make beads and pack things. Perfect. Because like getting a studio is like, like for one, like rent like crazy to actually have a space to do it. But I got to do all of that. So I like worked for him. And I also, it was like more than just that it was an apprenticeship because I knew how to raccoon fire, but like, I didn't really like, I did it in college a little bit, but he was raccooning all the time and we're like working together and like, Kind of sometimes we could collaborate. Then um, he decided to retire. And he's like, I'm selling off the stock. I'm done. Everything is, I'm done. And I was like, um, excuse me, you're selling me the business. So I bought the business from him because I already made the beads and I knew how to fire and like all the things. So I was like, okay. So, and he kind of, he kind of let it like the business die down because he was just over it. He was like, I'm tired of traveling to beach shows because it is like kind of hard sometimes. And it was mm -hmm. really before Facebook took off and stuff and like YouTube or anything. And he had the website, which was always in like of like repair. So um, <laughs> I always say that I resurrected the bead business because I started traveling more and just like I made my own like spin on it and started making my own designs and everything. So, I mean, I still do have some of his, but like I really made it like my mine. So I did that, and um, I've been doing that since 2010. Wow. So, wow. That's awesome. 14, 14 and a half years I've been, like, making Raku beads and, like, having fun with it. When was your first um, Tucson, uh, ex like, setup? 
When oh, when were you first in Tucson? I believe I think I did it in 2011 because I did the business yeah. for a year before I came to Tucson and it was because I was so intimidated and like oh my gosh and I did it like six day show and I was like oh my I'm six. and it was insane. There were like mm. with, uh, I had a six foot table and was just like crazy the whole time and I was like, what just happened? I didn't know like bead life was like this. I did other bead shows, but they were like, okay, yeah, people come and like, but I was just like, did I even have time to eat lunch today? It was cool. so, and I started at the um, to be true blue at the double tree. I don't know. Do you guys remember that one? Yep. I, I, that's where I met you. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> it's all such a blur. It was so like, it's such a small show. Like there was, people were cramped in there and it was like, you were like, basically like, I felt so bad. I neighbors behind me and I kept having to bend over and get under my table. And I swear my butt was in their booth more than it was in. And I'm like, so sorry, sorry, sorry. And they're just like, you know, like it was such a lovely environment little like my little the, the little block I call it of like us little artists and you just you know we be became friends I have some really cool like lifelong friends that like they live in Florida and we go on vacations together <laughs> like, <Yes. laughs> yeah I'm like because they were my neighbor and you know so it's like it was it became such a like a it's like the there's a bead family out there I mean you guys know you like are mm -hmm. in family it's like it's an amazing world that I was like, what, what is this? This is insane. I always did like pottery and shows, which was a whole different like ball game. Mm -hmm. but, yeah. yeah. What, um, what is it that inspires you? So what gives you the inspiration to make what you do? So um, basically like, I'm going to be honest, making beads and pendants can get kind of tedious sometimes. But when you get to the firing part, like, and I fire the things, they come out so different all the time. So I don't, ex I never know exactly what I'm going to get. I mean, I know my glaze colors and what it does, but sometimes I'm like, what is this madness? Like, this is, I got a shark tooth green. I'm getting hot pinks from copper because copper is the main ingredient in my glaze. So I I that's what really like you know that final step of like okay it's like christmas every time i open the like the this box and so that and i also really like texture and it works really well with um with uh like the the raku and tiny and everything so i have um I, I have some little props so or props like like i um like these wooden blocks they're the, I guess they're like, I guess for fabric, but mm -hmm. I love these because like there's so many, I mean, just kind of like, it looks like, okay, that's like, just like a circle. But like the things that I make with this, like I just like, I love to like explore and with my cutters, I use um basically little mini cookie cutters. And then I have some homemade ones too. And I just like cut play and they get to all be different. So they're. Like in my mind, I'm like, they're the same, but they're different. And I recently, so I call it like, I'm going to show you like my latest obsession of what I make is um, I flip speeds. And I don't know if you can really, see, but they're half shiny and half matte. Usually mm -hmm. I just do matte beads or shiny beads, but I was, um, I call them my eclipse bead because during a solar eclipse, I was Raku firing one day. And I was glazing and like, I'm just hanging out. And I got this hit, like, why don't you do them half and half? Like just glaze that half with, cause I use a spray gun. So I just do it with, with the shiny. Cause they were already matte. And I was like, okay. Like, so that's why I call them eclipse beads because they were inspired during the eclipse. And I started doing like the pendants. Some, it, it's kind of hard to see, but um, the pendants are like, yeah, it's really hard. On my, but um yeah so i'm doing half shiny half matte so that's that's fun i'm gonna need some yeah. of those when i see you next because <laughs> i basically sold out because i got so excited about them so i was like <laughs> well that's fun so it's like a like a just 
an ex constant experiment to come up with like different colors and different finishes. When you brought up the green, I found a strand of your green in cubes, which I now need to use because I have not used these. I've been hoarding them, but like how, I mean, how do the colors come out so different and, and vibrant? go into like the whole process of like what Raku is. I kind of skipped over all that. Um, so first of all, all right, another prop here. Um, everything starts with clay, like a 25 ba pound bag of clay, right? Wow. So yeah, porcelain clay. So I um, make the beads. I have a, a clay extruder, which it looks like, it's like a giant metal industrial. Remember like the Play-Doh? thing where it would squirt out the different shapes yes. I have this big metal like thing bolted to my wall and like I like ex it's called an extruder I extrude all these like logs they're logs then I cut them and then I either twist them squish them roll them and then I poke a hole in it so you can see like the tedious bit like that's like I'm like all right I'm gonna binge watch you know like so I'm eats and then so get that done and then I um, put them through my kiln so I fire them so they get to it's called bisque which um, it's makes them hard like it turns them like not from like dirt clawed state to a solid like like hard not like it's not gonna crumble so bisque it's called yeah, bisque so and then I put those on a rod or I like lay them out and I spray the glazes on and so I mix my own glazes and what goes in the glaze is copper. So the raw form of copper, copper carbonate. So I do that, like they're ready to go. And then I stick them in another kiln, a different kiln. So the kiln is already heated up. So it's like 1800 degrees roughly. Mm -hmm. And so I stick them in there. I have like all these specialized board things for holding racks and stuff. So I put it in there and I cook it for a while. Like, probably like 20 to 30 minutes and um, they heat up to 1800 degrees. And in that time, what happens is all of the um, ingredients in the glazes, they melt. So they become like fluid and like glass. There's, um, there's silica in there, so it turns into glass. So then I open up this like 1800 degree kiln. I pull them out, I have a special tool that I pull it out and I have, um, it's a metal box. It's actually from World War II artillery box so yeah it's old it's like my little frankenstein because it's steel and so it like it is rusting and i've got it packed and i'm like it's all welded together so i put it in and then i throw newspaper and i close the lid and what is happening in there is the beads are so hot that the paper ignites and when you close the lid there's a certain amount of oxygen in there so what happens is the fire burns the oxygen up and so like then the fire starts to go out but what happens is like now we get now i'm gonna get a little nerdy like sciencey <laughs> so there is raw copper so there's a copper molecule and it's like like a little copper molecule and it has um oxygen atoms attached to it sorry there's now there's a bug in my face um so what happens is the fire wants the it wants to keep burning so it literally rips the oxygen molecule off the copper and that results in the copper flashing different colors. Mm, wow. Yeah. So it's Fascinating. really, yeah, never know like what's going to exactly pull and like, you know, it's like, I can tell you exactly what's going on in there and everything, but then you open it up and you're like, I did the exact same thing, the exact same way every, all day. And like completely crazy different colors all the time. Like, and I'm like, that I do not exactly know why. And that's the magic of it. It's just like full magic. Who knew there was science involved in beads? Like, <laughs> <Right>. yeah, <right. laughs> um, we'll go like a little nerdy too. This is um, a Japanese technique mm. that um, originated probably like five, 600 years ago. And there was no written record. So it's all kind of passed down of like, like by by word and so like the stories kind of vary but what happened was there was like it was either a tile manufacturer or like a jug manufacturer 
got their kiln going and they've, you know, they're making their stuff and all of a sudden like something happens and the kiln starts to collapse. So they're like, oh no. So they start, we don't want to lose all of our pots and or all of our tiles. So they start pulling them out really quickly and just like throwing them in the yard. Like, oh God, we got to get them out. We got to get them out. And like, they'll be like, they'll be fine. They'll be fine. Like, we just don't want it. We can refire them when we fix this. And what happened was they like started, like they didn't close all the oxygen, off, but they were like, you know, in the weeds and the like, whatever started on fire. And then that's where they were like, oh, wait a minute. Those are really what happened. Like, cause they had like the copper and they, they used other things, other chemicals in the glazes too. But um, yeah, so it's kind of like, you know, Raku is like a happy accident that wasn't planned. And now it's survived all these years. I love that. Just mm -hmm. one big mistake turned into this huge yeah, this, and yeah. of ceramics. Like, and here we are, like, with these beautiful things that are, like, I, I do the small scale, so I have wearable Raku rather than the big pots and stuff. But. Yeah. That's, I, I, I did it in college, and I loved it, and I want to do it again, but um, I didn't get to make beads. I made, like, a vase, and I, I still have it, so it's really cool. I just love seeing all of the different things that can pop out of Raku, so yeah, makes me happy. <laughs> Have you done Raku on larger pieces? I have. Um, right now, like, my kiln is small. So sometimes I'll do, like, little bowls and, like, tiles and stuff. But um, I don't have a, a big kiln to do, like, the big pots right now. Eventually, I'll have one. But, you know, eventually. <laughs> no. I, I think just the magic is in the different textures and colors and you know, you put the, using those stamps, you make some really cool designs. Um, so they're just, they're all magical. Um, I, I, one of my favorites of yours, Amy, is these little hearts. Oh, the little babies. Uh-huh. <laughs> so I've used, I've used these in a number of bracelets. I do this two hearts beat as one, um, design and I always put two hearts together and I've used um, your hearts for a lot of these. They're just, and they're just beautiful. They're just so many beautiful colors and they're just magic. They're, beautiful. They're lightweight too. So which like, I mean, like it's basically, you know, like I make things with dirt. <laughs> <laughs> And can you um, can you do other things like can you put other things in that process where like the paper is? Can other things go in there that might impact the yeah. outcome? Yeah. So what you just need something combustible that will burn. You can use leaves, um, like wood, like all sorts of things. As long as it like burns, you can use it. I actually um, I just use paper because it's consistent. I can always get it for free because I use newspaper. It's like something that like I can store. Um, so it's easy for me. Interesting. Very interesting. I've seen people use feathers before and that turned out really cool on like pots and stuff. It yeah, burns that. And I actually do, um, I have some horse hair that I want to experiment with because they will like, like little, like it'll burn and make like the webbing and stuff. And, mm -hmm. I can't wait to see that. I, I love it. Right. Like I, I've, I've had this oh, horse hair for like five years. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Amy, get cracking on that. <laughs> <laughs> to the point where I'm like, where is it? Now I'm gonna be ready, but uh, where did I? Yeah. <laughs> um, so what are your What are your favorite things to make? I know you make the mugs and you make pottery and you make beads. What What's your absolute favorite thing to make? You know, I. It, I like you asked, like I had that question. I'm like, what do I like to make? I love to make mugs like, and handles. And I just, I love to that. Do that. But I really like to get creative with the stamping because like I get all these stamps and you can't like, I look at it and I'm like, what is that? Like I ha I picture it in my mind. Like when I'm looking at it, when I, at the, wherever I buy it from, I'm like, can I do that? And like, just that kind of process, that's probably my favorite. I get to be creative and then I'll like do different prototypes and I'm like, yes, no, yes. So I get <laughs> up with, I'm like, that is the best design. Love that, you know? So just like little 
designs like that. Like very cool. So from like, from front to, from beginning to end, how long does it take to produce like one pendant? Um, you know, like I do them in batches. So it like from like like if I started today and like just really worked on it, it would because I got to fill a kiln. So um, it's usually about like a week turnaround because mm. enough to fill the kiln because I can't just fire one bead because that would right. be a so but if I'm really like on top of it I can make them one day they dry for a day or two then I bisque fire them and then I spray the glazes and wipe and do all that and um fire so I think if I'm really on top of it I can do it like in three to four days because there's lots of steps involved yeah <laughs> very labor intensive <laughs> It really is, yeah. So, Amy, are you going to be in Tucson in at the fall show by any chance? The fall show I'm not going to. Um, mm -hmm. I know. But I live in Tucson, so I kind of thought maybe I will just um, set up a table at my house and, like, you know, do appointments. Because I did that one year. I moved to Tucson, and I just... I just barely got in my house and I didn't have my big kiln wired in. So I was doing like, I call it small batch raccoon. So I was only making little bits at a time. And I'm like, I can't do a show. So I just didn't do the the winter one, but I had like come to my house. So, so I'm thinking about doing that. So, but I will be there in February. Okay. Right. Yeah. 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 Well, maybe if you do uh, something in the fall, maybe Brittany and I and others might stop by and, and check you out. Yes. Yeah, let me know that those appointment times. <laughs> yeah. I'm coming I'm down. Yeah. <laughs> I just, um, I don't have a lot of inventory right now either. So I'm like, if I do a show, like, uh, yeah, I'm just going to focus on the big, but I'm like, my, my front room is big enough. People can come over and hang out, you know? Yeah. Be but fun. Have some cookies, that. look at beads. <laughs> That's the best thing. <laughs> when is your next Facebook sale? Um, it actually starts um next weekend. Oop. Yes. And it's in oh my gosh, what group is it in? It is in um art art beads. Okay. Yes. No, it's so not, this not an art beads. You know what? I really should like, like <laughs> Right, like it's written down in my phone in my calendar. I'm like, oh gosh, no, it's like um, artisan open market or um, glass open market. So I do have uh, like a Facebook group. It's um, Zaz Bead Raku Pendants and Beads, and that's where I post where my next sale is. Okay, so yeah. folks, if they are not part of that group, they should join so they'll get all the scoop of what you're doing, what's coming up. Yeah, and maybe maybe you can send um, Brittany and I the info on that show next weekend because this oh. will probably air just before it, so we can grab a link or something to share in the comments of the show when it goes live. So yeah, since I'm like I, you know. <laughs> I really should have like paid attention this morning when I was like trying to figure out my audio and then like, Oh wait, where, where, how can you get my beads? Oh, but I <laughs> have a web I told you about. I have filled that with goodies. So that's ready to go time. And I also made a coupon like that people can like get 20% off. <gasps> yeah. What's the so, um, crimped 20. All caps. Crimped 20. Okay. I'm and need to go check out your site before everybody else does. <laughs> yes. Let me let me uh let me go get that written down over here. <laughs> um when is that good till, Amy? Uh, you know what? There's no expiration date. So until like the things are gone, let's say. Yeah. Okay. Nice. Yeah, cuz you know, like cuz people like they'll, you know, they'll trickle in and watch your show as it goes and so. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for doing that. And I hope folks will, if they, if they know you already and love your stuff already, they'll scramble over there. And if they don't know you, they can use that coupon to try out your work for the first time. And um, that will be fun to introduce some people to you for the first time. That's really cool.
And like too, I have like the story of Raku and like my whole <laughs> of like when I was ten, somebody asked me what I was gonna be when I grew up and I was like an artist. And like all right. Yeah. And girl so very cool. I wanted to show um, Amy refresh your memory. I I probably sent this to you way back in 2019. I published I was published with some of your work um, in Beadwork magazine, which no longer exists. But um, I I um, had some of your goodies and uh, made a piece, and it was in uh, this edition of Beadwork. So awesome! Yeah, I used to, I think I used to get. Um, know that I have a subscription of that too. Yeah. So that, <laughs> the magazines go away. I know. I know. But I, I was so inspired by what you made that um, yeah, I, fi I was finally able to make something, you know, that clicked in my brain because I do have a tendency to hoard um, your stuff. Um, Brittany's too. nodding as well. <laughs> Yeah, I, I don't know why I forgot, but I have two, actually, you're one of the only artists that has two drawers in my artisan bead drawers. Yeah, one's for beads and like one's for pendants now because I have so many of them. And I just, that's why I was like, okay, Brittany, we need to make a necklace. So I got to use like one of your little face beads and this beautiful um, uh, pendant that you stamped on. So um, I'll post pictures of this. I did not film making it. But. Part of my mandala series. Mm-hmm. And then that some of your color. beads are up throughout here too. So it was really fun and like picking out beads that I thought would go with it that really typically wouldn't put together anyway, but the greens and the purples and the blues looked so pretty. It, it really was when you look at a pendant and you're like, oh, okay, like that's that colors. And you can go anywhere, like all of your bead stash and you just put it, like set it on top of things and you're like, oh wait, that color is coming out now. Or like, I didn't even see that in there. Like it's so there's so much depth and so many crazy colors that they you can make like any any bead in your stash will match a raku bead mm -hmm. or a pendant. Yeah. yeah, I'll say, Amy, of all of the raku people out there, I could pick your beads out of a lineup. I mean, yeah, I for sure. <laughs> Yeah. I know your stuff. Like if, if I, they were all lined up, I'd be like, that's Amy, that's Amy, that's Amy. That's not Amy. Like your work is just so, it's just so you and um, it it's like, beautiful. I always say to, um, I make, I make them with love. So I'm like love into the world one beat at a time because oh, I'm not, I'm not loving it. If I'm not feeling it, like I'm not going to make it, I'm not going to make the beads because I'm like, I want the good energy. And also I make my own glazes and it's kind of funny whenever I'm like mixing a glaze, I am like, I get a thought in my head and I infuse it with that, like empowerment or love or mm -hmm. like sending like good things into the energy, into the, into the universe, because like, it's just like, you know, exponentially folds like, all right, love, expanding love. So that's fun. That makes me so happy. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. that's good for the people that don't know you yet to uh, get to know you and know that everything they're getting has a little piece of you or a little piece of your thoughts and your love included. Yeah. So that's pretty fantastic. <laughs> Wild, because I realized I'm like, wait a minute. I'm just like, I'm just one person, but like, it's like, just I send out so much happiness. So that's what I try to do anyway. One of the pieces that I have of yours that I wish I would could show right now is one of those fortune cookies that you made. And that reminds me of how, what you did when you made those, you put a little, little thought or energy piece into it and then made them. And it's gorgeous. Of course, I got the, one of the turquoise ones, <laughs> but um, yeah, I saw it last night. And I was like, Oh, I, I don't know if I can ever do anything with that. Cause it's just so pretty looking at it. You no, know, I have like a bunch just sitting around on my shelves and stuff. Cause I'm like, Oh, that one's mine. Oh, that one's, you know, but yeah, like, I, I didn't make them with like the thought of like, Oh, to make a piece of jewelry with it. I'm like, that's just pretty. It's fun. It's like, I have time and like making each, I just sat and I was like, all right, like let's put some good thoughts into the world and made my own fortunes for people. So. Love that. Will you do those again? In, by uh, any chance? You know what? I might, I mean, I still do have some, so I need to pull those back out again and like, 
because I still have all the little fortunes I made. And what, what I do is when I, like, when I, um, grab, I, like, I grab a fortune, I don't read it. It's not my fortune or your, like, my message. It's not mine. It's yours. So I, like, do it, fold it up, stick it there. So I have no idea what that cookie's telling you when you get it, but. <laughs> Well, I, I, I do have one, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna. If you do put them out there, I'm gonna have to go grab okay. one of those because I didn't get one. Oh, okay, yeah, I do have some. I believe <laughs> gonna go through because sometimes I like take them and give them away and like move them. So I'm gonna go through. I'll do that when I we get off the air and I'll update which ones I have left on the website. So. All right. I'll be watching. <laughs> I had a private shopping experience with hers. She she had them with her one year at Tucson, but she hadn't put them out yet. And so I was like, gr grabbed it from her. <laughs> She's like, okay, okay. Sure okay. <laughs> Don't buddy, because uh, they're not out yet. But yeah. yeah. So, but And sometimes I'll do that. Like on the first day, I'm like, this isn't out yet. But like, oh, nobody knows about this little world. So it's like, so I'm like, always come first because the good stuff, or not the good stuff, but like, the like, my limited quantities of stuff. I'm like, I put it out and I'm like, it's gone, it's gone. You know, like I don't like, it's meant for the, like the person that like, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I think that day you were like, you can't take it home with you. I was like, what? And you were like, no, I got to go home and put a fortune in it and then send it to you. So I got to pick it before it was even done. I, yeah. I was just showing people them and like, I didn't <laughs> fortunes printed out. I'm like, Oh, that's, I forgot about that. I did that with other people. I'm like, Yes, you can, but you can't have it today. <laughs> like, I'll have to send it to you. <laughs> I up and like sent like yeah. Very cool, very cool, Amy. It was this was so fun getting to know you and letting others get to know you. I hope that um, folks will come check you out if they haven't already and. Um, thank you for your generous coupon code for everybody. I hope folks will go and use that to pick up some new pretty things from you. Um, thanks for being here. Just look at the pretty things too. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll put um, we'll put all of your information in the comments of the show so people can find you. And certainly um, throughout you know the the month that this show is out there will um, keep pushing people your way. And um, thanks for being here. Thank you for so much for having me. Like I feel very honored. Thank you. All right. Well, Amy, we're going to bid you adieu for now. Maybe sometime you can come back and visit us again. Sounds good. <laughs> you guys have a great <laughs> Bye. Bye, Amy. Oh my gosh, that was amazing. Yes, that was so fun. Oh, and I forgot to say, the way that this bracelet ties into Amy is I got these check beads from her one of her disash sales. And oh. so every time I look at them, now I'm like, oh, I got these from Amy. <laughs> Yes, I've got I've got my um, I actually pulled out three strands of her beads from my little uh, Amy Neely uh, Zaz beads um, bin. And now I think I'm going to put something fabulous together because they're right here. I'm not putting them back. So I got to make something going to make something with those beautiful beads. <laughs> I was so inspired last night. The thing is, I even strung this whole necklace and then dumped half of it on the floor. And I was just like, are you freaking kidding me? But then I was like, no, I have to finish it. So I redid it and it's, I, it just makes me so happy. So um, I will post photos of it, but um, I don't want to give it away. So it won't be anytime soon. <laughs> well, I'd love to see a separate post of that from our challenge piece so that people can be inspired by that and we'll go and visit Amy and see, you know, see her stuff and, um, pick up some of her beautiful pieces. So, so much fun. All right, well, we have just a couple of things left um, for this episode. So we always talk about what are we obsessed with right now? What are you obsessed with right now, Brittany? <laughs> um, probably, you know, I just finished uh, shipping all the items from my last drop. I really, I, I've been 3D printing for a while and I have, I have fun just 3, 3D printing cutters and things that I can use to um, make my own beads, kind of like Amy does with her stamps. I have a bunch of those wood block stamps too. They're so much fun, but I like making um, and printing cutters. So I think that's what I'm obsessed with right now. I have trillions of them, unfortunately. I, I, 
Can't Almost as many jumping. as you have Can't needs. <laughs> yeah. So probably 3D printing and, and polymer clay cutters at the moment. What about you? Um, so I've been a little obsessed with like center drilled beads. So um, on my YouTube channel last week, I posted a project um, that I made with these glass bead caps, which mm. are check glass, they're vintage, um, and they're, you know, they're a flower bead cap, and they have a hole through the center. So these are kind of, they're intended to be bead caps, but I made them into beads, just put them, you know, on a string and made a bracelet. And I've been doing lots of things with this kind of thing. So you know, a bead, a flower bead that's flat that has a hole in the center. So got another YouTube video coming out probably this week that I made some earrings with um, some things like that. So just trying to play around with how to use this kind of bead in maybe a way that you wouldn't think of or you wouldn't normally do. Um, so I've been kind of obsessed with trying to trying different things um, with that kind of a shape with bead caps, that kind of thing. That's so, fun. Kind of, I love that. Yeah. I, like the, I like those colors together. It goes well with your shirt. Yeah, I am. Um, I've got all the all the colors on today. Um, feeling very colorful on us on this day that we're filming. <laughs> so, um, um, what is your favorite design you've made lately? Um, so I think it's very simple. It's a very simple, simple thing, but it is this pair of elephant earrings. Cute. So these, um, these little elephants are also vintage check glass. Both of these beads, the flower caps and these elephants were part of my little adventure to the art beads warehouse where they've got pallets and pallets and pallets of vintage beads that haven't seen the light of day. Like these boxes have some of them have never even been opened. So we were uncovering all of these amazing beads. And I love elephants. I know you do too, Brittany. And um, these elephant beads came in two different strands. There was one that was like all neutral colors. And then one that was all these vibrant like blues and reds. And, um, and of course, this was the, like the most traditional elephant color. So mm -hmm. I just matched them with these little discs and... I'm crazy about them. I'm just crazy about them. I can't stop looking at them. I have them just sitting here in the studio because I just, I just love them. I'm, I'm, I'm obsessed with those too. <laughs> Cute. Um, yeah. Mine is, <clears throat> so I don't, I think it might have been even last week. I, on JTV Extra, when I did um, my Be Break with Britney show, I made this three strand bracelet and I love it so much. It's got a magnetic clasp. But here is, it's got, um, I think it's leopard skin, rhyolite, and carnelian. But these <sighs> really fun sliders and a magnetic clasp. But I, like, loved it so much that I made two other ones. <laughs> and I <laughs> love the design. So this one's got um, some green and brown. So this is, uh, I think, artistic jasper or painted jet. I can't remember which one. And then um, this one has lapis and sodalite. So I have them in every colorway that I typically wear. <laughs> I just need three of them. So oh my they're so comfortable. Oh, here we I go. love them. I absolutely love them. I love the gemstones together. Like they just, I don't know, they just look magical together. Yeah. And they're so comfortable. Um, it's like a really fun cuff. You look like you're wearing three bracelets, but you're not, you don't have three bracelets tangling and fighting each other and <laughs> Just really fun to put on. So. That. That's very cool. I missed that show. So now I know what was made. At least I, I'm not missing out on what was made. <laughs> yeah, I had a lot of fun because, and, and the reason why I was able to make so many is because the one of the items that I was showcasing, these stones, gets 16 strands. So oh I was God. able to choose a bunch of different colorways. And obviously that's only... Mm -mm, three, four, five, six, seven different uh, stones out of the 16. So it was, it was a lot of fun. I really like these bracelet bars and I'm not typically a person who does a full multi-strand bracelet, and, but because sometimes, you know, having too many can feel a little tight, but these just really are fun. And I just love looking at them 
and you look like you get nine bracelets, but you, but you get three <laughs> really yeah. fast. You can pair all those together with a really colorful something, and they look like you know you've got like a Wonder Woman thing going oh, on. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's great. Yeah, I I I have felt like lately the creative vibe is just taking me like it's just taking me away like every time I sit down to work on something I'm just so lost in it um I don't know if that happens to you but just you just get lost in loving what you're making get this little bit of like euphoria um mm -hmm. going make something that you're really loving so um those seem like this necklace last night and this bracelet because I wasn't filming them so I got to really focus on what I was doing and I love it when colors come together that you don't typically use or you use a component a different way than you typically would use it like these jump rings so or something that you've had for a very long time and you're like huh okay let's use that like this bracelet bar and now I, I think I have a pendant that matches it so I'm just gonna make a matching necklace today so very cool. Very cool. Well, we're always going to do these couple of little questions that we give each other every month because um, we hope that these kinds of things inspire you guys too. So are we ready to introduce the um, the next challenge for Absolutely. each other? So the episode seven crimped challenge um, not surprising, uh, we're going to make this very Raku centric. <laughs> so we want everybody, well, first of all, Brittany and I will make a necklace and matching earrings with a Raku pendant or Raku beads or both. So the set has to have at least one of those in the, that combination. Um, and we also want to include some sparkle, so some crystals or rhinestones or some kind of sparkly element that will sort of offset that kind of rustic raku look. And then um, the earrings should be dangly. So they should not be like just, you know, a stud earring. They should be dangly in some way, have some movement to them. Um, and they should have, you know, some of the, they need to match the the necklace um, in, you know, in some way. So what do you think about that, Brittany? I'm excited. Uh, unfortunately, I just made this necklace, so can't count, but <laughs> um, I can make a companion piece or something. I don't know. I'm, my, my, the wheels are turning. Of course, they probably won't be completed until the night before we film next month. <laughs> but... Yeah, I am. Um, I'm going to try and get the jump on uh, on it earlier, but um, I obviously need to keep the printout of the challenge um, <laughs> close at hand before I get started so I don't make the wrong thing and then, you know, wake up uh, or be snatched out of bed to go check and see what did I do wrong. So, um, you are so yeah. Funny. <laughs> So I'm excited about this because I do have some of Amy's goodies here. And I think that's what's going to shape the first, you know, the first thought of um, what I'm going to put together. So I'm excited about that. Yeah, I can't wait. Always love having a new raccoon necklace to hang out with. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Not going to lie. That's a good one to have. <laughs> So, uh, Brittany, you and I are going to be joining forces, um, sort of, not together exactly, but we'll be part of an event that's coming up. Can you tell folks um, what we're doing? It's next week, right? No. Well, mine isn't next week. You're, I'm mine until the 31st. Yeah. So, um, we are doing JJB or Jesse James Bead Summer Camp. Um, my class is on the 31st. What date is yours? Mine's the 29th. It's the first day. So I guess, yeah, that's week after next. Um, so yeah, I'm the last uh, class of the first day. Oh, cool. I think I'm the last class on that Wednesday. So we've got a week and a half till mine. Uh, I'm excited. I It's mm -hmm. it's an interesting project. I, <laughs> I think I said in this last show, Sarah asked me to make a big... Um, 
macrame necklace instead of you know you know typically using beads so I was challenged a little bit but I think I really like oh, it's actually sitting right here for some reason but um love how it came out and can't wait to teach it but we're going to be using a knot that I've never taught before and uh it's really self-sufficient because you have just the closure on the back that is adjustable so it can go over your head but Super cool. I love the color of that cording. And I, I got my my kit um, a couple days ago and I loved pulling out that big chunky cord out of the kit. It's pretty cool. Um, I I don't actually know where my, my design is at the moment, but I'm teaching a, a necklace two ways. Um, so Sarah asked me to do a design symmetrical and then do an asymmetrical version. Um, so I've got lots of chain and I've got some um, beautiful beads and um, I, my, my class is called uh, Night Hike. So we're going to be going for a night hike and our, um, my necklace is going to be a very night inspired um, piece. So I'm excited about it. I love the thought of night hike. It also sounds terrifying. <laughs> I was going to mention that in the class. Um, <laughs> because, I thought, totally do it. Don't really do it. <laughs> yeah. So I'm pretty clumsy. Um, so the idea of actually going on a hike at night is um, like a, uh, a death wish for me. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. But I love the idea of going out and being outside like where it's safe and <laughs> seeing the stars. I We love to do that where I live. We live in a dark skies community. So um, you can see the stars really well, and um, I'm kind of kind of into that. So I love the idea of it, but yeah, probably would never really do it. <laughs> Not in reality, but in my mind. Especially here in Arizona, <laughs> snakes, scorpions, coyotes, no thanks. <laughs> yeah, I see enough of those things during the day. I don't want to be like caught by a uh, caught by surprise by any of them at night. Right, <laughs> right. That would be good not good at all. Well, um, I'm looking forward to that. And um, I'm also looking forward to sharing this episode. So I hope that um, folks have enjoyed this one. Um, I hope you'll let us know in the comments what you think about this show. Please share it with your friends. And if you notice that we are not yet at a thousand, invite your other jewelry making friends to the party. Um, there's lots of fun things that we want to share with you and um, we want to keep this group going and we'd love to actually have some additional fun with it. So we want to we want to be able to do some things around the challenges. So um, let's get to a thousand and have some fun with that. Yeah, I can't wait. All right. So anything else you can think of, Brittany, we should share? Uh, no, we will make sure that we give you all the links, all the coupon codes that, that came out today and let you know where you can see Amy's work. Um, and then we'll catch you on the next one. Can't wait to see your, your, uh, crimp challenge number six pieces in our group. Yes, please share. <laughs> and we'll see you in about a month, guys. Thanks Bye. for watching. Bye. Cutie, you love you.